Hello everybody, my name's Paul Tace. In this video we're going to be looking at how to colour grade in DaVinci Resolve 16. Now I've chosen DaVinci Resolve because it's a free piece of software and it is really great at colour grading. Uh, if you'd like to find out how to download it for free, there's a link in the top right hand corner now or the description down below. Let's get started. Okay guys, so um, if you haven't used DaVinci Resolve before, I do have a guide on how to use it. I'll link that in the top right hand corner now or in the description down below. So what I've done here is I've got all these clips I'd like to edit. Okay guys, so if we have a quick look in the timeline, um, these are all the scenes I want to edit and I'm just going to skip through all the editing part and go straight to the colour gradient. Now if you haven't used DaVinci Resolve before and you'd like more information on how to use it, I do have a guide I'm going to link in the top right hand corner now or the description down below. To do the colour grading we're going to click on this little icon down here and we're going to press that and it's going to bring us through to the colouring tab. Now what I've done here is I've got this image to start off with just to get us used to some of the colour grading tools. Now the first one I would like to point out is the uh, colour wheels. So if we go along the bottom left here we can click along some different tools. Uh, we're not going to go through everything today, I'm just going to focus on the important ones which is going to be the colour wheels and the graph. Okay. So I'm going to click on the colour wheel and then here we'll see we've got four wheels. Now uh, the lift is going to control all our shadows, the gamma is going to control our midtones, and the gain is going to control our highlights. Offset will control all of them together. We don't use that too much but there may be situations where it may be useful. Now to start off with we're going to have a look at the shadows on the lift on the left hand side. And uh, this little uh, bar down the bottom, this little dial, if I click on that and drag to the left it's going to make more of our shadows darker and then if I drag it to the right it's going to make more of the shadows lighter. Now as you go as you make everything brighter it will start to affect your midtones but it will be very subtle at first and then get more obvious as we obviously drag it further. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit this little uh, reset button in the top right hand corner of the wheel and it's going to put it back to normal. So again if I go to the left we can see I'm making the shadows darker and then if we go towards the right, we can see I'm making the shadows brighter. Now another thing we can do is we can also affect the colour of the shadows. So in this instance, I'm going to grab this little circle here and I'm going to move it around. And you'll see that um, if I move it over towards the blue, the black's gone blue, yet the white has stayed completely white. And this is again because it's only affecting the shadows. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit reset and then we can look at the gamma. Now again I'm going to start off by showing you this little dial down the bottom. If I drag this towards the left, this is going to make our midtones darker and it's not going to have too much effect on many of the other things. And as I drag it further and further to the left you can see it's getting darker, the black's obviously going to stay black and the white is staying white. Okay, I'm going to hit the reset button and then I'm going to drag it to the right this time and we'll see all the midtones are getting lighter but the black is still going to stay black. Now again I'm going to hit the reset and then we can move the colours in the middle here and we can see if I move over towards the yellow it's giving everything a slight yellow tint and as I bring it around towards the green again it's only actually colouring the midtones the whites and the blacks are going to stay the same colour. And then I'm going to reset this. There we go. So obviously this is going to be fairly self-explanatory again. This is uh, The gain is going to control the highlights. Now if I push this towards the left it's going to make all the highlights darker and it will have a certain effect on the midtones as well. And if I reset that and push it to the right it's going to make everything brighter. And I say this is really only going to be affecting the midtones and the highlights but as you can see the black is still completely black even if I push it right to the right across. And then I'm going to hit reset, and then I'm going to show you um, the colour grading. So if I bring this over towards the yellow, we can see the black is still completely black, but the highlights are more affected by the yellow. And then as we go around, we can see how it affects all the different colours. And then I'm going to hit the reset, and that's going to put that back to normal. I'm going to look at a few things down the bottom as well. We can play with the contrast here. If we push that up to the right, we're going to get more contrast. And if we push it to the left, we're going to get less contrast. Okay, I'm going to press Ctrl Z to reset that. And uh, then we're going to have a quick look at the saturation. 
Now the saturation, you can uh, push up to the right and it's going to make your colours more vibrant and then if we push it down to the left, we're going to lose colours altogether. Now just a word of warning with the saturation, if you do push it too far to the right and you put too much colour in, it can make your work look really unnatural, so just be really careful how you use this. Okay, I'm going to reset that back to normal now and then we're going to have a look at the hue. Uh, the hue is just going to change the uh, the colours, it will cycle through the colour wheel, uh, so it's not going to be too useful for us if we're editing drone footage. Now something I will mention, because I've shot this all on the Mavic Mini, uh, the Mavic Mini only shoots in MP4, so we're not going to have as much control over the colour grading as we would if we could shoot in RAW, but there's still a lot we can do. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is if we click through to the number 2, now this isn't again going to be too useful for the Mavic Mini, but we can affect the colour temperature. Um, where we're going to be shooting in daylight most of the time, we're not going to need to use this. But um, I do use it sometimes just to add a nice warm effect to some of the pictures. So we're going to come back to that in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to press Ctrl Z and reset that. Okay, so now I'm going to come through to this first clip. And uh, this first clip, as we can see, is hugely overexposed. And uh, there's not much we can really do to save this. We can improve it, but you'll find if something is overexposed, it's really hard to bring back because we've lost the information we need. If something's underexposed, it's easier to correct it. So um, if you do have to decide between overexposing or underexposing your footage, you should always choose to underexpose because it gives you more options in post-editing. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go down to show scopes. Now if this is the first time you've done it, you'll probably have four like this. Um, the only two I really want to focus on are going to be the waveform and the vector scope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this little icon here and this is going to bring up two graphs. Now if you don't have the right graphs, you can hit this little arrow here and you can select whichever one you like. So as I said, I like the waveform and again I've got the vector scope here. Now the waveform is going to let us know how good the exposure is, uh, where it's exposed and where it's underexposed, and the vector form is going to affect the colour grading. So I say this is pretty much a generic one I use for editing all footage, and you won't need the vector scope too much if you're working with drones. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this picture as good as we can. So as we can see it's overexposed, and then this waveform here shows that we've got a lot of uh, highlighted colours because all the colours are towards the top and we haven't got any shadows at all because there's nothing down the bottom of the graph. So what I'm going to do is go over to the left and I'm going to drag this to the left and as you can see we're starting to get the lines touching the bottom of the graph. Now we've also not got a lot of mid-tones going on around the middle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the gamma and I'm going to drag this towards the left as well. And as you can see, we've got a better spread of colour across there. Now, um, the shadows have gone down a bit, so I'm actually going to boost these up again. So they're just touching the bottom. And there we can see we've got it better exposed, although it's still not perfect. The sky is still completely blown out. Um, so if we go to the highlights and we drag this down just to show you, we're just going to lose the white in the sky, it's just going to go grey colour, we're not going to gain any more detail, so we've not really achieved anything by doing this. So I'm just going to hit reset, and accept that this is the best we can get for this footage. Okay, so, um, and then if you press play, you can play through and make sure the footage is how you like it. And you press play by pressing spacebar. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is uh, this piece of footage here, and if we play through, we can see this is underexposed. Now if we looked at the waveform, this is just going to confirm that it's underexposed and uh, we can see there's no colours up here at the top of the picture, which is what we're going to need. So what we can do is come over to the gain and we can boost this up until we've got some colours touching the top of the graph. So already this is looking a lot better. I can try pushing the gamma up a bit as well and then just dropping the shadows down so we've got a nice spread of colour throughout. I'm going to drop the shadows a bit more just by looking at the picture, I prefer it like this. Um, another thing we can do is then go into the graph little tab here and we can put a little S shape in this graph by clicking and dragging down and then clicking and dragging this up and this is going to give a little more contrast and it's going to give our picture a bit more of a punch, a little bit more vibrance. 
So once I've done that, we can see this is looking a lot better than it was before. What I can do now is go down to the bottom, and if this is on one, we can change it to two, and then we've got the color temperature. And this is what I wanted to show you about the color temperature. If we look at the vector scope, we can see I've actually got this pretty good on the white balance, but um, what I can do is I can push this over to the right a bit more, and just give it a little orange tint, and it just makes it a bit warmer. Now, this isn't correctly color balanced, but I just prefer it for this particular piece of footage. And again, this is going to be your preference, so this isn't always going to be necessary to do. And as we can play through, we can see the color gradients worked quite well. Now next, we're going to look at this waterfall. Now, this is actually fairly well exposed already. You can maybe boost up the uh, gain a bit more, put a bit more highlights in there. And uh, then I'm going to go over to the graph and I'm just going to give it, again, put a little S in there, just a tiny amount. And again, this is going to give it a bit more contrast. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, change the uh, colour gradient itself. And uh, I'm going to use quite a common one you'll see in films. And to do this, we can go into the lift and just put a bit of blue into the shadows. And then we come into the highlights and we put a bit of yellow or orange in there. And this can give it a bit more of a filmic look. Now I only really want a very slight tint, and this is going to do fine for now. That's pretty much it for this one, and I'm going to leave that as it is. We're going to click onto the next one, and as we can see here, we've just got some waves going across. Um, we could put a few more shadows in there, but other than that, there's not too much to do. So again, I'm going to go into the shadows and look at the lift, and I'm just going to drop this down to the left bit too far. And then we can see it's gone really dark and most of the colours are down the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push towards the right with a gamma just to lift up the mid-tones. And this is going to improve the exposure. Again I'm going to go into the graph and just put a little S shape in here, give it a bit more contrast and I'm happy with this. Now the last one we're going to look at is this footage of the castle. And as I come through, we can see what colours we've got going on here. Now again, we've missing a few highlights at the top. So I'm going to go back into the colour wheel, and I'm going to drag the gain to the right. This is going to bring out the whites and the highlights, as you can see up here. And then down the bottom, we've got no shadows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the lift, and I'm going to drop that down until we've got the, until we've got the graph touch in the bottom. And then we can see this is now a pretty good exposure. But where I've taken this on a cold and gloomy day, I want to add a bit of blue in there and just give it a bit more of a chilled look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the offset and I'm going to bring the blues over towards the right. And this is really going to cool the picture down. Now once I've done that, I would actually like it to be a bit darker in the shadows. So I'm just going to bring them down. And there we go. I'm happy with that now. Okay guys, so this I hope this has given you a good idea of what we can achieve by colour grading, uh, how we can use it to get the correct exposure, but we can also use it creatively to get some different looks and some different feels to our footage. Now I do recommend you have a little play and you find your own style that you might like. As I say, with films it's quite common to get a yellow gain and blue in the shadows, but um, just see what works for you and what you enjoy. You can be creative with different colours, just have a little play and see what you like. Uh, now there's one last thing I'd like to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the edit and I'm going to drop another clip of the waterfall in here. So then, so now if we go back into the colour grading tab, so as we can see we've got this one colour graded and this one's without the colour grade. So if we've taken uh, several pieces of footage, we've stopped and started it, we know that the white balance is going to be the same between the two, but then if we alter one, we want to get the next one exactly the same. If you want to do that, you can go on the one you've edited, right click it and press grab still. Once you've pressed grab still, you'll get a little icon in the top left hand corner here. So then when we go through to the piece of footage that hasn't been colour graded, uh, we can just right click on the little icon up in the top left and press, and press apply grade and it's going to give it the exact same colour grading. 
Okay guys, so once you've done, you can just go to deliver and deliver the video the same way you always would. Again, if you don't know how to do this, I do have a video called uh, The Ultimate Guide to Editing Your Drone Footage. I'll drop a link in the description down below. And this should give you all the information you need to look at. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. Um, I'm just going to play through now the before and after of all the footage so you can see how much difference it's made. If you found this video useful, hitting that like button is a great help to me as a creator. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button, that bell icon, and you'll know as soon as they come out. Okay guys, that's it for this one, and I hope to see you in the next one.